In this video, we're going to look at the absolute value vertex form and what information it tells us and also actually it makes our graphing absolute values a little bit easier. Now, in this form, there's certain things that we can get just by looking at this equation. For instance, we can tell what the vertex is just by looking at the uh, equation written if it's in this form. So the vertex is located at h k. Now the a value tells us the slope on the right side of your vertex. Negative a would tell us the slope on the left side of the vertex. So let's take a look at an example or several. So let's take this f of x equals absolute value of x minus 2 minus 4. The vertex of this absolute value is the point positive 2, negative 4. For the, for the x value of your vertex, you always take the number inside and basically change the sign. So instead of negative 2, it's actually positive 2. The one on the outside, that's your y, you keep it the same. It um, kind of goes along with, if you watched my earlier video, I had over. In, uh, inside changes, move it horizontally, your x values. Opposite what you would think, so we make it opposite signs. And then outside, it's vertical, your y values. Exactly what you, uh, exactly the same. So it kind of matches with the transformation stuff I did in the other video. Now, the other thing we need is the a value, which is the number out front that the absolute value is being multiplied by. And in this case, there isn't a number written, which means it's a 1. So to graph this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my vertex. So positive 2, negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, OK. And then a, my 1, is my slope to the right of my vertex. So rise over 1, up 1, over 1. On the other side, it's negative 1, so I go up and left instead of right. And I can extend it out pretty far, but that's probably good enough. So what about this one? Absolute value of 3x plus 5. Okay. For the vertex on this one, well, we have a positive 5, so we make it negative for the vertex, but there's nothing added on the outside. So this means that value is 0. So what I'll do is go ahead and plot my negative 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. And from here, I use this 3, the a value, to get my other points, because it's your slope. Remember, rise over 1, 3 can be written as 3 over 1. So I'm going to go up 3 because it's positive, 1, 2, 3, and write 1. On the other side, it's negative 3 over 1, so I'm going up and left. And there I have my equation. This also works for inequalities. So let's take uh, let's take f of x is less than or equal to two thirds absolute value of x plus one minus one. The vertex of this one is going to be negative one, change the sign on the inside, and negative one. Keep it when it's on the outside. So negative 1, negative 1 is my point. 
2 thirds is the slope on my right side. So up 2 over 3, 2 over 3, and I'm going to go all the way to the as far as I can because I need to extend the lines out for my shading purposes. And then on the left side I go up and left. Now because this is less than or equal to, I connect my dots with a solid line. And the last thing I do is shade. This is less than, so I shade below my vertex. So I am going to be shading down here. Now one more example, because I haven't shown you any that had a negative A value yet. So let's take f of x is greater than negative 3 fourths absolute value of x plus 7. My vertex on this one is 0 because there's no number added or subtracted inside the absolute value. And then 7 on the outside. So 0, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there we go. That's my vertex. And because this is negative 3 fourths, it means I'm going to go down 3 and then over 4. So down 3, over 4. And on the other side, I'm going to go down 3 and left 4. So positive opens up, negative opens down. Now because this one is just greater than, I do have to connect my line with uh, its dotted lines. And because it is greater than, I'm going to shade above my vertex, which is over here. So compared to using a table to graph the absolute value, this is much easier, much quicker, and you really don't need a calculator at all to do it. Until next time.